Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm here to offer you a Hatha Yoga practice from the Everyday Counts program. For those of you who are familiar, we're back in the space. So let's begin. Um, I've got a blanket here that you might like to have one too to place under your knees. Um, you might have something to sit on. It could be a chair, it could be a cushion. Um, yeah, anything else you might like to have for your comfort. Once you are comfortable, let's find a way of being that is most comfortable as we center. So it might be kneeling, it might be sitting cross-legged, or it might be lying down. And you're welcome to change position at any time. Once you are comfortable, perhaps close your eyes. Perhaps begin to breathe through your nose if you can. And allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive, to feel your body touching down and feeling that support beneath you. Maybe beginning to notice the sensation of air or clothing against your skin. And feeling your body becoming still. And now perhaps we can begin to tune into the breath. Perhaps we could notice the feeling of cool air moving in past the nostrils. And warmer air moving out. Inviting that cool air in. That warmer air out. And perhaps we can follow the breath a little deeper. That cool breath in expands the abdomen, and maybe the waist, the low back. And that warmer breath out and the abdomen gently draws in. If it helps, you can bring your hands to your belly. Cool breath in, soft expansion. Warmer breath out, slight inward movement. And we're walking that joyful line between kind of controlling the breath or influencing the breath and simply allowing, allowing the belly to soften, to expand and receive the inhale. And simply allow the exhale to roll out on its own. So let's stay with the breath. For a few moments more, inhale, feel the gentle expansion. Exhaling, feeling that gentle inward movement. Perhaps following the next three or four breaths, soft and deep. Soft and slow. Letting this be enough to breathe and to feel. So here we are now. If it suits you, perhaps rest one hand to the belly and one hand to the chest. And offer yourself some sweetness here, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation, just for you. Now slowly releasing your hands, perhaps opening your eyes. So you're welcome to give your legs a little shake, 
um, to change position. We are going to bring a little movement to the upper body. So again, change position however you need to so that we can sit comfortably upright. You're always welcome to move to a chair, move to a cushion, whatever you need. Uh, so we're sitting up tall. Uh, and now we can flow with the right ear to the right shoulder. And slowly back upright. And the left ear to the left shoulder. And back. Let's do that a few more times. Imagine you're drawing a rainbow with the crown of your head. Nice and smooth. The shoulders can remain upright and quiet. As we flow with the head from side to side. Drawing that rainbow. Noticing what we feel. And then we can meet with our head back at center. And now we'll move into a little bit of rotation so we can turn to look over the right shoulder. And slowly back. And to the left. So we're starting out smooth and steady here. I imagine I'm drawing a line along the horizon with the tip of my nose. My head kind of floating here at the top of my neck. You're welcome to close your eyes to imagine that horizon line. You slowly turn to look over one shoulder and then the other. And again, we'll meet back at center. A final bit here, we're gonna drop the chin down to the chest. And then slowly back upright. Think about length to the back of the neck as you gently tilt the head back, lift the gaze. And then forward and back a few times. Again, soft and steady, smooth and steady. Noticing what you feel. Setting the tone for how we'll move through this practice. So again, we can bring the head back to center. And again, adjust your seat whenever you need to. Last little bit of movement for the arms. Yeah. So we're going to press the palms together. Yeah, we can gently press. Just notice how it feels to add a little bit of engagement here as we press the hands together. And then as if we're kind of winning the battle one way and then we're going to push through the other side kind of resisting and at the same time letting those arms those hands shift away from center well, the shoulders can still kind of be soft and heavy we're sitting upright now we're going to make our way back to center where we can interlace the fingers we're going to press the palms forward we're going to press through the heel of one palm and then the other. Just a little wiggling here movement. You can see it from here. Just a little press. Uh, and we'll press through both hands. And if it's comfortable, we're going to float the arms overhead. We can stop at about halfway or maybe all the way overhead. We can bend the elbows a bit to make it a bit more possible. And then we're going to press through the heel of one palm and then the other and this can be the slightest bit of movement you can get pretty stretchy here through the arms and press through both hands and then slowly float the arms down yeah and then do a similar flow here we're going to turn the palms out float the arms up imagine them getting nice and light and they can meet overhead or a little bit more in front we'll press the hands together slowly bring them down in front Let's interlace and press and reach up. So we're going to kind of keep it going here. We're going to float the arms back down. We'll do that a couple more times. Last little bit of seated movement. Float the arms up. Imagine the light as feathers. Palms press. We bring the hands down and press them together. Let's interlace and press forward. 
floating up. And release. We'll do this one more time. You're welcome to close your eyes, to move in your own way. I'm only here to make suggestions. Move freely one more time to the heart. And release and press overhead. And the arms flow down. Uh, we're just checking in here if you need to roll the shoulders a few times, give yourself a bit of a shake. Now, let's release those legs. Give them a little shake. Uh, and we can lean into the hands here if that's comfortable. We're going to take the feet wide and the knees bent. I'm just leaning comfortably into those hands. And now allowing both knees to fall to one side. And then the other. And this can be kind of stretching through the hips. It's okay if those legs don't make it to the ground. It's okay if you need to adjust how wide the feet are or how bent the knees are. Just means we can find a comfortable, soft movement here. Kind of noticing the breath here, soft through the nose. And then we could add a little bit of a twist here. So for example, as the knees fall to the right, we lean into that right hand and lift the left arm, slowly reach around behind us. We might find our twist here, a little extra in-breath. And then slowly back. Now the hand comes down, the knees come to center. Let's shift the knees to the left. We'll lean into the left hand, float that right arm off the mat and slowly float it around behind. Again, maybe the next inhale, stretch a little further. And floating that arm back. Let's turn this once more on either side. The knees fall to the left, there's that sweep, sorry, to the right, there's the sweep of the left arm. And reach. Slowly back. And reaching those fingertips away from my shoulder, stretching out of the shoulder. So I find my way into this on the other side. Extra stretch here. And back. Wonderful. So we're back. From here, we are going to make our way to hands and knees tabletop position. That was just a little transitional movement from seated. Um, this is where it might be nice to place a blanket under your knees. Floors are hard and knees can be tender. Once you're on hands and knees, notice what else you might need here. So we might find that the hands are uncomfortable flat and that will get easier over time. You're welcome to come on to fists, sort of the tops of fists with inner wrists facing. Or even for some of these movements, it might be more comfortable to be on your forearms. So please feel free to adjust for your comfort. And what's lovely for you is you can press pause, take a little break, circle the wrists. You can skip a part to any parts of these practices, skip ahead to any parts of these practices that serve you better. So we're going to begin by rocking the hips from side to side. And we might quickly find some sensation of stretch here as we rock the hips. And from here, we can turn it into more of a circular journey. Rock the hips over to one side and then kind of circle them back towards the heels. We're going to rock over to the other side and then circle forward, weight onto the hands. We're pushing them out of way, and then continuing this slow, circular journey with the hips. Each time you circle forward, you push the mat away. We're leaning into those hips and moving through those sensations of stretch. And the next time hips are moving past the heels, let's reverse the direction of this circle. Shift and lean, push them out of way. Maybe even closing your eyes, finding your breath. Noticing how it feels to 
circle around the body. We'll circle one more time. And then we'll meet back at center. So it might feel nice here to adjust the knees, to shake out the hands, or to choose a different hand position. Again, we can be on fists or forearms. As we move through a little bit of cat-cow, so this extension and flexion of the spine. So locate your tailbone right at the bottom of your spine. We're gonna tuck that tailbone under and begin to slowly round through the spine, press the floor away, squeeze the belly a little bit, and as we inhale, we can turn the tailbone up, slowly start to arch the spine, maybe just a little shrug of the shoulder blades together, gaze forward, and then we're changing direction, tuck that tailbone slow around it. And then turn that tailbone up, slow, gentle arch. So let's carry on for a few more in either direction. Maybe close your eyes, you can connect movement with breath or not here. That's one of many suggestions and options we have to practice. But let's notice how the pelvis tilts forward as we arch the shoulder blades shrug together. And then as we round that pelvis tilts back, those shoulder blades glide apart. And maybe once more in either direction, moving in your own way, in your own time. And then we'll make our way back to that neutral spine, maybe even widening the knees a little bit here as we press back to a child pose. So I'm dropping the hips towards the heels. It's okay if the hips are quite elevated here. And then walking the arms forward to rest the forehead between the arms on the mat. But if that forehead is hovering, we could cross the forearms, rest the forehead. We could even stack the fists and rest the forehead here. And we'll take a few moments here to find our breath again. We'll invite that soft, deep in breath. Soft or slower out breath. Couple more, soft and deep. Soft and slow. When you feel ready, let's slowly make our way back to our tabletop position. And then we are going to step one foot forward and come to what I call a kneeling lunge. So whether you want to keep your hands on your mat to get there or to come to kneeling before you step forward. Yeah. So it might be nice to have a wall. I've got a wall here just in case or to have a chair nearby. Just know that that's always a nice, um, helpful helpful support um, because this can feel a little bit imbalanced. So listening to the body here, noticing what you need. Um, you'll also notice uh, that's my left foot forward and that my right hip is just over my right knee. So I'm quite upright in this pose. Now, if your knee gets tender, extra support of that blanket under the back knee because there's quite a bit of weight on it. You could tuck your back toes under. That's going to be a bit of a foot stretch, but it might give you a bit more stability and it might not. You'll notice my front knee is just over the ankle. So uh, if I still feel really topsy-turvy, I can take that left foot to the left a little bit, widening my base. I could also keep my hands on the front thigh the whole time, or even just one. Yeah. So from here, we're going to notice if we've got some wiggle room, if we could shift the hips forward a bit, and then shift the hips back. And this doesn't have to be a big movement. In fact, I'm going to invite you to keep it quite small. And as we shift the hips forward, we're going to give that right butt just a little squeeze with our mind. We're going to squeeze it, and that's going to probably invite a little more stretch to the front of the thigh. And then we're going to release the squeeze once we're upright. So we come forward, there's the squeeze. 
And then once we're back up, release. And it feels a bit like a pulse. We'll squeeze. Release. We'll do about four or five more. Squeeze. And this is to help stretch that thigh in an honest fashion, which can really help if we spend a lot of time sitting. And there's the squeeze. And release. And we don't have to go far to find this. Squeeze. And release. A couple more. And that could be quite strengthening for the glute as well, which does get a bit sleepy when we sit. So this is a great kind of therapy for when we spend a lot of time sitting. Let's do one more. Great. So once we're upright, um, we are gonna reach that top arm up. I'm gonna give you a side view so it's a little easier to see what's happening here. The front view, I guess it is. So we've got the left hand to the left thigh. We're reaching up through the right arm. We're very upright here. Press down, reach up. Hopefully that front hand is giving us lots of stability. We can press down through the front foot. And then we're gonna slowly side bend towards the left, maybe even shifting that right hip to the right a little bit. And then we'll slowly come back up. I like to feel those side ribs sort of sliding back down. Again, we're gonna stretch, side bend. And I'll, I find that I'm kind of squeezing that right butt at the same time. It helps me be stable, it helps me stretch. And then back up, right? Let's do three more. It's gonna be pretty juicy, stretchy stuff. Again, feel those side ribs slide back down. Shift the hip. I often lose count at three, but let's try one more. Great, and then we're upright, down. So we're gonna bring the front leg to meet the back. We are gonna move into a child pose for a moment so that we can have close up through the front of those thighs and take a few moments to find our breath, to become comfortable. So let's find that soft in-breath. And soft or slower out breath. A couple more. When you're ready, let's do it all again on the other side. So this time it will be probably the right foot forward, the left leg back. Again, support that back knee. It can feel a bit tender. If we feel like we're on a tight rope, again, we've got the support of the wall or a chair perhaps. We could take that right foot to the right a little bit, widening the base. That left hip is over the left knee and maybe we tuck those toes under and maybe we don't. Got that right hand to the right thigh for extra support. And I'm shifting a little bit forward and a little bit back. I'm gonna squeeze that left butt as I come forward. And as I come back up, I'm releasing it. This could be the tiniest bit of engagement to help us. It's actually keeping the pelvis nice and upright and really finding that hip extension, that stretch to that back thigh as the leg comes behind the hip. Yeah. So if you're finding this very stretchy, that's okay. It is a bit of a stressor though, so you can choose how far forward you want to move. You can even just squeeze the butt and feel the stretch without shifting forward. That's a great option for some of us. Again, if we spend a lot of time sitting, these muscles do need that chance to stretch and to engage. So it will get easier over time. We're gonna do three or four more. Squeeze, release. Again, remembering I'm just making suggestions. So anything that doesn't work for you in this practice, skip ahead, switch it up, do something you love. Do one more here. And 
and then we're back upright. Yeah. So now we'll move into that side bending. So we're reaching the arm up to start, getting nice and rooted through that front thigh, that front foot. Let's see how long we can, how much we can reach up. And now we're gonna side bend to the right, shifting that left hip to the left. And then slowly back upright, drawing those side ribs down. We'll do that a few more times. And again, this could be a tinier movement. I'm exaggerating it a bit so you can kind of see where we're headed. But tiniest bit, if we're feeling it, we're doing it. We're feeling a bit of stretch, some engagement here. You might be squeezing through that left butt, kind of keep the stretch going down into the thigh as well as the side body. Do three more here. Noticing your breath here, soft through the nose, even as we challenge ourselves. Two more, maybe. One more. And back upright. So one more time, we are gonna move into a child pose. If there's another pose you'd prefer to help you settle and soften, please feel free. It might feel nice to widen your knees here to get a little bit of a soft stretch to the inner thighs as you press back, as you walk those arms forward and rest the forehead one way or another. And maybe closing your eyes as we find that soft belly in breath. Softer, slower, out front. All right, when you feel ready, we are moving from our hands and knees slowly to standing. So again, if there's a chair or a wall, just take this in steps. Find your way upright. Uh, so here we are in mountain pose. Notice if your feet feel comfortably under you. Again, if you prefer to have the support of a chair or a wall nearby, great. Um, sometimes I pretend I've just discovered that I can stand up and it's, it's kind of new to me. And I can start to delight in the support of my feet. Wow, and that I can balance here on my feet. So I might notice that I have toes. I can lift and spread the toes and the weight shifts back a little bit. So you keep your arms out for balancing and then I'm gonna lower the toes. I'm gonna lift and spread the toes and lower them. And we'll do that a couple more times. You're probably starting to feel some awakening in the feet. This is helping to lift the arches and say hello to them. You might feel this in the calves. Just kind of noticing what you feel as we lift and spread the toes one more time and lower them down, yeah. Okay, walk the feet a moment, releasing any tension there. And now we can roll onto the outer edges of the feet. We're kind of pushing into the outer edges and kind of lifting the inner edges. And now we're gonna push down into the inner edges, lifting the outer edges. We're gonna go back and forth a few times. This can be the tiniest bit. There could be simply pressing into the outer edges and then pressing into the inner edges. Or maybe we're actually lifting those opposite edges as we press. You can kind of, it's hard to see that in the camera, um, in the video here, but you might see how my knees are kind of shifting and I can actually feel this all the way up to my hips, that press down, lifting up, pressing down. And your feet might have a lot to say about this. So once more in either direction. Yeah, great. Again, let's walk the feet. Notice how that feels. So we're kind of doing just kind of a warm up of the body as we get comfortable with being upright. So we're gonna walk our hands down our thighs and bend our knees just a little bit so we can place the hands and the weight on those thighs. And we're gonna to start to circle the knees. And if your knees don't wanna move from side to side, that's okay. They can simply bend forward and back. Yeah, or we can start to circle. And as we do, this kind of feels like an ankle circle as well. You might start to stretch into the calves. You might be kind of circling around the edges of your feet, feeling those toes kind of lift and spread. Yeah. 
and we'll change the direction. These can be the tiniest circles. Just kind of playing with what's possible for you today. Notice that soft, steady breath. Maybe softening the forehead, softening the jaw as we circle one more time. Yeah. All right, so we're going to come back upright. You can walk the feet, notice how you feel. Like to move up to the hips. We're kind of focusing on the lower body today, all the way to the hips. You can bring your hands to your hips. You can even widen your feet a little bit. And maybe we rock the hips from side to side. Remember, we did that in our tabletop position before we started circling. And we're doing that again here. So now we're going to turn this into a bigger circle, all the way back and forward and around. Noticing how it feels. Sometimes I notice if one hip has a little more to say to the other, or even as I shift the hips forward, one thigh is feeling a little tighter than the other. And then changing the direction, keeping those knees gently bent so they're very receptive. We're still circling the knees and circling around the edges of the feet because it's all connected here. So let's circle a couple more times. Wonderful. So let's come back up, right? Yeah. We'll take a moment to find our mountain pose, Tadasan. So again, the feet are comfortably under you. Maybe the toes are kind of engaged here and spreading. The weight's evenly shifted on those feet. We're going to bounce the knees a couple times just to notice we don't need to lock them to be here. They can be quite buoyant. I like to imagine I've got tiny weights suspended from my fingertips and a helium balloon tugging the crown of my head to the ceiling. Yeah, maybe the next inhale, we can get as tall as possible. With the exhale, it's soft and the shoulders away from the ears. Two more like that. Inhale, nice and tall. Exhale, soft. And here we are now, halfway through our practice. So um, I'd like to invite a little bit of side bending. We already did a little bit of side bending when we were lunging, and now we're doing a standing side bend. So there's three different hand positions that might be comfortable for you. The first one is hands at center, like we did at the start of practice. The other one would be to float the arms overhead. I don't know, you can't really see my fingers here. Almost, there we go. Um, and they could be shoulder distance. And arms are heavy, so this, this can feel like a bit of a weight-bearing exercise for the shoulders, so you can pull your arms down at any time. And the third one, sometimes helps us keep our arms there, is to bring the hands together, even to interlace the fingers, just pressing those index fingers long. So three options. I'll give this one, and I might change the arm position throughout. So I'm going to press down through the feet, reach up through those fingers. We can slowly side bend towards the right. And this can be the tiniest movement. And then slowly back up right. And to the left. And back. And you could do that with the hands separated, slowly to one side. We're making sure we don't kind of curl forward or round forward. We're very much spreading through the collarbones as we side bend back up and to the other side. And again, I'm noticing how those side ribs sort of lengthen away from the pelvis, lengthening the waist, and then they kind of slide back down as I come to center. So we're playing with that body awareness along the side body, keeping it open, feeling it draw back down. Wonderful feeling of connection here. I'm kind of pushing the floor away with my feet as I come to center, any hand position will do. Again, I'm going to push the floor away as I come to center, and that's going to help connect to that strength of my center. Push the floor away. Let's do one more in either direction. Pushing the floor away helps me come back with strength to center. Right. 
Float the arms down, walk those feet. Shake it out any way you need to. So we've done a lot of side bending today, and I thought we could continue with that um, into some of our warrior poses with variation. So a little bit more focus on the side body. And so we could start by taking the legs wide. And I would say um, only as wide as your legs are long or even a little bit closer. It's, and then we can adjust once we're in the pose if we need more challenge. So let's locate our right foot. We're gonna pivot on the heel and turn the toes to face that side. And then we're gonna scoot the back heel back a smidgen. So it's like the foot's turned out a little bit. You'll notice the hips are no longer facing forward. They've shifted slightly on the diagonal, somewhere in between the two. From here, let's float the back arm up. I always peek at it to see if it's in line with my shoulders. It often isn't, and that's okay. And then I'll float the front arm up. That one's over those right toes. Yeah, I'm softening the shoulders, reaching the fingertips away from me. From here, I'm gonna push the ground away again. So push down through those feet. Again, that just helps us find stability and strength here. And let's bend the front knee. Nothing else really changes. Shoulders are still over hips. And then I'll straighten the front leg. It's okay if those, that knee tracks over the toes a bit. We're kind of pointing it towards the second or third toe. You're gonna to feel that glute engage on that side. But if you wanna widen your stance, you're welcome to. Kind of listening to your knee here, listening to your ankle. I'm gonna do a few more of these. This is kind of our big challenge here in our practice today. These standing poses use, use those major muscles. So again, if you want to put your arms down, if you need the support of a wall, please feel free. We want to meet you where you're at today. And so let's do one more. Now we're going to stay in this pose. This is our warrior two. You can gaze over those fingertips, push the floor away, reach the fingers away from each other. Let's try one variation today with a side bend. So the back hand, find it, it's gonna to flow to the outside of the back thigh. We're gonna turn the front palm to face up. We're gonna reach it towards the ceiling. We walk the back hand down the back thigh. There's our side bend again, that slide of the ribs away from the side body. Let's take one more breath in, reach up a little more. I'm gonna turn that hand away and let's come back to our warrior. I kind of feel like I'm windmilling my arms here. We're gonna straighten the front leg and we'll do it all one more time. So we're bending the front knee, soft shoulders, reach those fingertips. There's some energy radiating through those arms. Let's find the back hand, float it down. Turn the front palm up and reach. Maybe follow with the gaze as you let that back hand float down the thigh a bit, press the ground away, reach up. And then we'll turn the hand away, back to our warrior. Let's float the arms down. We'll bring the feet parallel. This is where it might be nice to bring your hands to your belly and find that soft, even breath. And softer, slower out breath. A couple more. So as you open your eyes, let's do this on the other side. Locating the left foot, let's pivot on the ball of the foot, turning the toes to that wall. We're gonna scoot the other heel back a smidgen. It's like the foot's turned out a bit. Again, you're noticing your hips have shifted a little bit. They're not all the way in that direction, but they're no longer sort of square with the, with the computer, with the camera. Uh, we're gonna float the back arm up, noticing it's in line with the shoulder. Sometimes it floats up, sometimes it flops down. That's okay. Then we'll gaze over that left foot in that direction, reach the arm up. So again, soft shoulders, reaching fingertips. Let's push the floor away with those lovely feet and then bend the front knee, pointing it or kind of directing it towards the second or third toe. It doesn't need to be above those toes, but just in that general direction. So you've got that outer hip quite strong here. And then we'll straighten the leg again, keep pushing the floor away. So we bend and straighten a few times, reminding those shoulders to soften as those fingertips reach. And you could be looking over those left fingertips. Let's 
Soft shoulders reaching, fingertips, and we'll stay here. Yeah. Push the floor away. And let's find our side bend. So the back hand floats down to the outside of the back thigh. We'll turn the front palm up. Let's reach it towards the ceiling as we walk the back hand down the back thigh. Maybe we reach a little bit more, feeling those side ribs slide away. And up. Then we can turn the hand away. Kind of windmill those arms gently back for our warrior two. Let's straighten the front leg. Release the arms for a moment. And we'll do it all again. Arms up, bend that front knee. Soft shoulders, reaching fingertips. Find your back hand, float it down, turn that front palm up and reaching. And finding an extra breath here to reach up and stretch. And we'll turn that hand away, and melt those arms back. Find it. And float the arms down, straighten the leg, bring the feet parallel. So this time we can bring our hands back to our belly and kind of catch our breath here. Or we can move this into a wide leg forward fold. Or we can bring the feet closer if this feels too stretchy. So the option could be to bring your hands to your thighs, nice bent knees here. And with higher low blood pressure, sometimes it's nice to keep the head in line with the heart. You could even bring forearms to thighs, and again, the head could remain slightly lifted, or you could reach for the floor and let your head hang. And if the wall is behind you, you can even lean back into that wall if that helped you, um, helps you to feel a little more stable. I'm just giving a little side view here that I like to keep the knees a little bit bent. If the legs are straight, I tend to sort of hang off the mid-back, but once I bend the knees, I've got a little bit of slack for the hamstrings where it kind of feels like I'm pouring out of my pelvis. So if the head is hanging, maybe gently nod your head yes, turn your head no, give those shoulders a shrug. We'll be here for three or four more breaths. And these are partial inversions with the head slightly below the heart. And it tends to slow down the breathing and slow down the heart rate. So two more here, soft belly breath in. Soft or slower breath out. Okay, let's slowly roll back upright. So it might feel nice to bring those forearms back to the thighs, bent knees. You can bring your hands back to your thighs and push the floor away as you slowly come upright. Shoulders could lift and roll back and down. And then we could heel toe, heel toe, back to our mountain pose. Let's find our mountain one more time. Your feet are comfortably under you. There's a bit of buoyancy in the knees. Maybe as we inhale, we stand a little taller. Maybe the exhale invites the shoulders to soften. I wanted to come once more to this floating arm movement we did at the beginning of practice, if you so choose. So we could float the arms overhead, and the palms might touch. We could bring the hands to front, pressing gently together. You can interlace, press the arms over, float them overhead. And slowly down. We'll do that a few more times, imagining those arms so light, floating, pressing all the way down, interlace, press, and sweep the arms up all the way down. And let's do this two more times, floating arms. Soft breath, strong legs. We could do this leaning against a wall or sitting on a chair. Let's do this one more time, floating. Pressing. Leaping forward and all the 
the way back down. Finding our mountain here. A couple more breaths. Okay, so now it is time for us to lie down. It's not quite time for final relaxation unless you want it to be, then just ignore me and start to relax. Um, but just notice that you have what you need nearby uh, for that final relaxation, whether it's a blanket or a pillow or both. So I'm gonna invite you now to lie down on your back. And we're gonna to return to that wide leg position. So the feet are wide, the knees are bent, and the arms can be comfortably at your sides as we rock both knees to one side and then to the other. So we did this pose from kneeling, or from seated last time at the start. Now we're just noticing how it feels to do this in a reclined position. even close your eyes here as we rock a few more times from side to side. Great. So next time the knees are upright, let's hug those knees into the belly. And a little rock from side to side. Kind of smoothing out the little back here. And then maybe we can circle both knees together a little bit. We're gonna get a little shifting and rocking through the pelvis. This can be the tiniest movement. change direction. And then we'll meet with our knees at center. Let's reach the legs up and bend them a few times and we don't need to straighten them entirely. Just noticing how it feels. Okay, the next time the legs are straight-ish, and you can hold on to the knees here, we're going to point and flex the feet a few times, kind of spreading the toes wide as we flex, even keeping those toes spreading as we press through the balls of the feet and then point the toes. And then you point, you can hug the knees into the belly, and you can still point and flex a little bit. So just deciding how much stretch you want here, how this feels through the low back. You can start to circle from the ankles. The legs do like to be upside down sometimes, so this is a little treat here. And circling all around and then changing the direction of the circle. Great. And now we can Bend the knees again, and you can bring the knees out to the sides for a moment and use the weight of the arms to kind of draw the knees towards the armpits. Allowing a bit of a stretch to the inner thighs. And finding your breath here. So as we guide those knees closed again, um, I thought we could move into a two-knee twist. And one way to get there is to bring the feet to the mat and just gently shift your hips and buttocks over to the right a few inches, kind of just move them over. And then you can lift your feet again. I know it's gonna feel a bit crooked for a moment. And then you guide those legs over to the left. If you've shifted your hips to the right, you bring the legs to the left. Now, a blanket or a pillow could be really supportive here under those legs. 
or even between the thighs. So kind of adjusting for comfort here. And then you could bring that other arm away from you. I kind of have it in a cactus position, a nice bend to the elbow. You could have the arm straight away. And we'll look over that far shoulder. And it's okay if there's a little space between the thighs. You can even bring a leg or an arm between there if that felt more comfortable. And maybe that right shoulder blade's on the mat. Maybe it's not. Let's invite three or four soft belly breaths here. Soft and deep. Soft and slow. When you feel ready, slowly bring those legs back to center, bring those hips back to center. It might feel nice to hug the knees in, to rock a bit from side to side. And then we'll do it all again on the other side. So this time, as you bring your feet to the mat, you can kind of scooch the hips over to the left a smidgen. And then as we lift the feet, we can rock those thighs over to the right. Yeah. And again, we might place a blanket or a pillow between the knees or under the thigh. And then we'll bring that left arm away from us, maybe in a cactus position or a straight arm, just whatever feels right for you, maybe looking in that direction. You could even place a hand between the thighs and notice how that feels, or even to the outer thigh creating a bit of an anchor, making any adjustments here. Well, these twists can be quite subtle, which is kind of a nice way to finish the practice before we relax. Again, I'm finding that soft, deep breath in. Soft or slower breath out. About three more, soft and deep, soft and slow. When you feel ready, slowly guiding those legs back to center, guiding the hips back to center. Notice if there are any other poses or stretches you wish to do before final relaxation. Maybe it's a hug of the knees to the belly. Maybe those feet are wide. You've got that windshield wiper movement. Maybe something else entirely. You're always welcome to hit pause and keep practicing any way you wish. If you are ready for final relaxation, a few suggestions here. Um, you can always move to a couch, a bed, a lazy boy, um, or you could, if it's uncomfortable to have the legs lying long, you can keep the feet wide at the edges of your mat, turn your toes in a little bit, and then rest your knees and thighs against each other. That usually brings the low back into a comfortable, quiet place. Or you can have the legs long, they could move away from each other slightly, maybe the feet roll outward. You could have the arms long at your sides, maybe turning the palms up, even shrugging those shoulder blades together slightly, allowing those collarbones to spread. Or even hands to the belly or any part of the body where you just want to feel that extra support and awareness. And so here we are now at the end of our practice. Again, allow yourself 
a few moments to arrive as if you've just landed here on your mat. Feeling that support beneath you. Perhaps noticing air and clothing against your skin. Tuning in to the sensation of the cooler in-breath moving in past your nostrils. And the warmer out-breath moving out. Cool breath in. Warmer breath out. Maybe we follow the breath deeper and notice the cool breath in expanding the abdomen. That warmer breath out, softening the abdomen back down. Not controlling the breath, but inviting, allowing. We'll have the in-breath, soft and deep. The out-breath, softer and slower. Perhaps we can imagine that with each in-breath, our awareness is being invited all the way out to our toe tips, our fingertips, and the crown of the head. Each exhale is inviting us back to our own center, wherever that is, whatever that means. The inhale, inviting us out to our toe tips, our fingertips, the crown of our head. The exhale, returning us to center again and again. Breath after breath. The inhale, helping us expand our awareness. And the exhaling, helping us find our center.
if your mind has wandered. That's okay. Come back. Let's make an offering of five or six more breaths to this pose. Each inhaling the bite end has to expand our awareness all the way to our toe tips, our fingertips, the crown of our head. Each exhale inviting us back to our own center. As you complete those breaths, perhaps find your fingers and toes again and give them a wiggle. Maybe a slow turn of your head. A stretch, a yawn, a hug, whatever you need here. You're welcome to stay right where you are for as long as you want. If you wish to, you could roll over to one side, resting your head on your arm. You could gently push the floor away and come upright to a comfortable seat if you so choose. You may wish to bring a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest. And once more, offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. And releasing your hands, slowly opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to the Everyday Counts program, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.